What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are going to do some more work on the Chevy 2 or aka Chevy Nova and get this thing rolling and hopefully the suspension all finished. Like on the last episode, we had to weld that thing and I'm surprised that actually helped to just move it around the shop. But I mean, it's still everything was still cambered in and everything. But I want to go ahead, throw that all together. All the parts have arrived. We got it back in and uh... Hopefully everything goes well. Let's go ahead and see if everything lines up as far as the suspension goes and see how this thing goes back and forward under the proper suspension specs. take a look at this so everything is looking awesome in here we got one of our brake lines all routed just like the factory on the other side well not the factory but just like how it was done on this side over here and we still got two more lines that we got to route through there we got these two lines that are the heater lines that are up here right now so we're gonna have to actually drill two holes to accommodate for these and then we also have to transfer those holes that hold this tank right here um like looks like a breather tank or honestly i'm not sure what it is yeah it looks like a breather tank and they've got one on this side and one on this side so it'll mount right there and this one will mount right here which is already mounted so we got to replicate this side to that side over there so let's go ahead and drill two holes here drill the holes for that and hopefully everything goes and matches take a look at this we got this thing back all together our fitting lines are back in of course nothing is bolted down tightly i just wanted to make sure how everything fits since we did some pulling on this everything in here is looking amazing just like before you know it looked like well before it looked like this i'm talking about this side before this side is looking amazing so we also still have to mount this, but before I mount this, I want to make sure that everything is good. So the fender, none of the bolts are in here at all. I just threw it on here to see what our holes look like and all the holes are lined up over here and our body lines and seams and gaps are looking A1. I mean, this body line right here and the gaps are looking good. Of course, nothing is even bolted in yet, so we still have tons of adjustment to move it around. Uh, everything on the other side over here all the bolts are still loose 
and everything's looking A1 as well. Same thing over here, everything is still loose, so but body gaps, lines, everything's looking really good. We're waiting on the hood still. Once the hood gets here, we can mount that in and see how the hood gaps are looking like, but this is getting one step closer. Whew. Check out what just came in the mail, and there is our Tesla Model S 2013. And this right here is our water pump that actually mounts and sits just like this old one used to. And the old one, as you can see, right next to each other is very identical. As you guys remember, we did do a cross-reference on our part numbers. There's that. This has a four pin. That also has a four pin. Same design down here, same design down here, same little corner, same little corner there. Everything looks identical. So we're gonna go ahead and swap this out and get this thing installed. Just like that, the Tesla water pump fits, everything connects just like the other one. And man, that saved us a whole lot of money right there. Everything on that thing is identical, including the part number, the connectors, and everything else. All the hoses went on perfectly. These little heat shrink hoses, they are expensive uh, as compared to your traditional clamps, but they just look so much better. And the cool thing is they always, when the hoses heat up, they keep tightening themselves tighter and tighter as their shrink wrap hose tights clamps, I guess. So I've never seen anything like that before. First time seeing this. Now we're gonna have to go ahead and see what we got in stock so we can go ahead and throw some more stuff at this because this is overall a huge project. So whatever parts are coming in, we're going at it and doing it piece by piece. So the next thing we gotta actually do is go ahead and remove this windshield. Now I've never removed the windshield in my life before at all, but the chrome trim on it was kind of damaged. So I decided to play around with it. I already got new trim moldings. So you can kind of see how it's dented up there. Um, and we gotta remove the windshield just because A, we're gonna be painting this cowl. And second of all, because there was a slight little crack right there. So I'm gonna have to get this tigged back up or I mean not tigged, welded back up, grind it back down and then we'll put the filler. I don't wanna just put filler on top of this because it might crack the filler and we don't want that. But as I was playing with this windshield, it looks like it's like a school bus style window. So like there's no urethane. I mean, I've got it out almost this much so far. And uh, of course this side's broken, but I think this window just fits, this fits into the groove and this looks awesome. There's no rust in here at all, which is really good because most cars have been completely rotted out. And the other thing is when I was banging out earlier, the bottom of this rocker, you can kind of see sand coming out of it. And also when I was, uh, you know, banging on it down here, there's also sand down here. So the cool thing is, this is sand, like media sand. So the whole car has been sandblasted, which probably speaks for this, uh, you know, rotisserie, you know, restoration type thing. So that's good news right there. If you see sand coming out the bottom, obviously it hasn't been flooded. It's not like ocean sand, but this uh, that's really good news. So I'm gonna try to see if we can get this window out. Maybe it'll save us a couple bucks and maybe, who knows, maybe we'll install it ourselves because it doesn't seem like it takes any glue or anything. Well, look at that. We got the front windshield out of the car and man, that was a really easy process. It literally took me 10 minutes and I don't even have any tools, just use my hands. Of course, wear gloves with the windows broken, but that's it. And the good thing is there's no rust underneath here. Most of these old cars all have rot underneath there and all this, and this is looking really good. So like the engine and everything else that was done on this car, it's all high quality parts. And whoever did this thing did a A1 fantastic job on this thing. All right, so if you see behind me, the Chevrolet Nova is on the truck or the Chevy too, as I must say. And take a look behind me. 
It looks insane. Pulling Chevy or GMC with the Chevy 2 behind it. New school and old school. And we're going to take this thing over down to my buddy's shop and get this thing all fabbed up for the exhaust that was damaged. So let me show you what the exhaust looks like right now. And you guys will see the after. So here is the exhaust. As you can see way down in here, it is actually flattened down where no air could even get right through that thing. So we're going to have this built a whole new one and take it down there and then have it installed. Dang guys, take a look at how wide these wheels are. Well, the tires and the wheels. That is insane. What size is this thing? 315 3018s. I think these are the widest tires I've had on any car. The widest tire size that we've had is on the GT and on the Lambo, both running 305s. Wow. This must be some nice sticky tires and you can see they still got the markings on them, but our damage this wheel right here, as you guys can see, that corner is going to get repaired. This one is like near perfect. But since I'm sending that out anyways, I want them to check this one out anyways. So we took it off. There is a little bit of scratches on the inside. So maybe they could repair that. And this one over here, all good to go. Slight little bend there. Let's see the other side on this one. And yeah, this side had some scratches. So we'll take care of that. And there's this wheel. That was the worst one of them all. And look at the bend on this side. No wonder it wasn't holding any air. So we're gonna have these all trued and straight. Send these all out. See, I knew this thing was gonna come in clutch at one point. We got all the wheels loaded on this golf cart and actually this thing has been more useful than any other thing we've been using. Moving stuff around, picking up parts, all this stuff makes it such a breeze and it was worth the investment to add to the collection. And look what got dropped off for us as well while we were out here. We got our coolant as well for this car. And we also have to add that. That way we can make sure our cooling system is good to go since we spilled a bunch. We got our new gaskets for the headers that we never replaced. And just that one side because we took it off. And then we got our new collector gasket as well with the bolts. We don't need the bolts, but we got the gasket uh, because that was missing. And they use those like one-time use style ones. I got this one, which is an aluminum reusable style. If we ever have to take it apart again, easy, can reuse it. And we also got some more of these hose clamps. So before we put the cooling system together, let's go ahead and put these hose clamps on and get this thing fitted nice and tight. And then we'll start adding the coolant and maybe we'll do the headers first. I don't know, you guys will find out.
All right, so the Tesla water pump is actually working really well. It's pumping water back in here. We'll cool it. It's trying to get all the air out right now, but you can kind of see it coming in and out. So we're gonna keep filling this up till it bleeds it through. We just got the key on the on position. We're gonna fill up our coolant. The radiator's good, just that lift, and we'll crank this thing up. So we've left this thing running, the pump's running. I can actually feel it going through these bottom hoses. We put the new clamp so nothing's leaking as well. Coming back up to here, you can see that moving around. And if I put my finger in there, you can feel the flow coming out. So it's flowing out of here really nicely. The pump's working great. That's filled. This is on a separate cooling system for those that are wondering, just for the Whipple right there. And then we have a separate system right here for our cooling of the engine, of course. All right, so we got the motor running. Everything is all filled up, looking good. That's filled as well. Burning off a little bit of coolant that was spilled on the exhaust over here. So that's just burning off all normal. We're gonna keep an eye out on the temperature, make sure everything's good to go, and we're one step closer for a test drive. Well guys, take a look at this. We got the other hood off the car already on the prior episode, but on this episode, we went ahead and got the hood on there and we transferred over the lock switches and everything else and take a look at this. This thing fits really nicely. Now keep in mind, none of the gaps on the fenders are even set. Um, the only thing I've tightened is that top bolt up here on the corner and the bottom one over there so we can get the door gaps and everything else all situated. So we're playing around with that right now. None of this side to side movement is adjusted. So this will be loose and we can play around with it. And same thing with this side over here. Everything's loose, but we do have one slight issue, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to put the hood on there to see if our hood hinge was bent. And this hood hinge was also sitting up just like this. As you can see, you can't push it down anymore, but it was sitting up just like this on the old hood. But we didn't know if it was because the old hood got hit just barely right there in the center. I'll show you guys what I mean. We'll walk into here and you see how right here on the old hood, it pushed it in just slightly. So we, oh, right there, there it is. There's the bow on it. And as you can see, we didn't know if it kind of maybe was the hood that tweaked, but it makes sense that the hinge was tweaked because of the fact that it's on that side as well and it tweaked it. So safe to say, that our hood hinges are bad we're gonna order a new set of hood hinge well just this one right here and we'll try this again behind me the chevy nova or chevy 2 is all fully assembled we know exactly how it goes back together we got all the bolts in the right places and everything is lining up perfectly let me show you guys what it looks like and everything is still loose as you guys can see i could still move stuff around to get them perfect but that right there is looking sharp so we got the whole front end all assembled and we don't even have the bolts all the way tight or not even all of them in there as you can see, I just wanted to mock fit everything. 
to see how the gaps will be or anything else that we may have to do. But what we're gonna do now is disassemble everything and start prepping the jams. Like, as you can see in here, that jam's all messed up. We actually hammered and dollied them and fixed them so it can get the same shape as it does bow in a little bit here. And we did the same thing. So we're gonna make it look just like the other side over here. And we're gonna make sure underneath the hood also looks good. But everything else, like all these bolts are still loose. I didn't tighten none of them. I didn't wanna go through it. And I had to use a zip tie here on the bumper to uh, to kind of help me hold this bumper up right over here. So, cause I'm by myself. But we got them all anchored in. Everything's all good to go. Let's go ahead and pull this all back off. All this hard work for nothing. Well, it is for something, but uh, let's pull it off and start prepping. Well guys, the Chevy Nova is all good, or should I say Chevy 2? Everything on it lines up except for that side hood. And that is because of the hood hinge. As we showed you guys, the hood had a massive dinger right here in the corner. So I'm guessing when it pushed it, it tweaked the other side up just like this. And that's why this new hood's sticking up. And also the old hood was sticking up. Now on the other side of this car, everything on this thing is lining up sharp. The bumpers, the gaps. And keep in mind, these are not even final adjustments yet. We just wanted to make sure how everything fits. And now we're gonna be off the paint and body work and prep work. So on the next episode, guys, make sure you guys are subscribed because you know you guys will see when the video comes out. Make sure you guys like this video. Comment down below if you guys like this old school retro mod style build. And until then, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.